the computing power has grown a lot over the last several years because of this we are getting amazing devices that can do a lot of calculations and yet they are so small moving forward people are still interested in the same trend meaning the computer should do more calculations while having a small factor this introduces a lot of challenges with respect to thermal management of a device so what does thermal management mean so here i have a graphics card now this is not a high-end graphics card by any means uh, this is basically used for day-to-day -day, uh, computing right now in this particular graphics card you might not see this the processor is actually underneath the fin we will be showing you a computer model of the same graphics card where you can see that but this processor heats up a lot and hence we need this large fin to cool the processor down in this particular case the fins actually help the processor maintain a safe temperature by increasing the available surface area for heat transfer now how do we see all of this in action well we can perform something called as a conjugate heat transfer simulation and that's exactly what we did we used ansys workbench to simulate the entire process we first created a very simple model of this particular graphics card using ansys space claim once we created this graphics card we created an enclosure around it inside this enclosure air is going to flow over the graphics card and help it cool down once you have created the model in space claim we enable shear topology that will help us identify different volumetric zones in ansys fluent the next step in this process is computational meshing in this case we have the fin the processor and the base circuit board all of them are solids and they are made up of different materials for the enclosure we basically have high quality tetrahedral meshes and for the solid components i'm applying body sizing once this is done we can proceed to ansys fluent a conjugate heat transfer simulation is one where multiple modes of heat transfer is involved in this particular case there is solid conduction and on top of that there is also convection which basically removes the heat from the solid fins to the external air. Since we are interested in the final temperature distribution, we will be performing a steady state analysis. Now in real life, the processor heats up because of performing a lot of calculations. The more the calculations, the more the heat generation. In ANSYS Fluent, we are recreating this process by adding a volumetric heat generation source to our processor. Once we specify the heat generation source, we move on to assigning the other boundary condition. Now, in this case, we are going to have air flowing in this particular direction so that it can actually remove the excess heat from the fins and take it outside. All right. So we ran the simulation for about 150 iterations and we monitored the maximum temperature of the processor till the solution converged. Once a converged solution was obtained, we post process the results using ANSYS CFD post and here are the results. Now, if you look at the image, you will notice how non-uniform the temperature distribution is in the fin. Now, this is highly realistic. That is because the fin is being heated right exactly in the middle because that is where the processor is. Now, in addition to this, you can also see that there are some high temperature zones, especially when there is flow recirculation. Whenever there is flow recirculation taking place, velocity tends to drop. And because of that, convective heat transfer is reduced. Any critical component that is placed in this recirculation zone might encounter thermal damage. All right. Hopefully through this video, you learned a little bit about thermal management of electronic devices and how to simulate it using ANSYS Workbench. If you're interested, click the link below to learn more about our latest course on ANSYS Fluent. Thank you. Bye.